Welcome, viewers and subscribers, to another Beat in the Press podcast. Today we are here to review the two derby matches that took place on the weekend. Manchester United running out 2-1 victors over Man City. And Arsenal running away 2-0 winners over Spurs. We're going to jump straight into it and dive into the review of both fixtures. We're going to start with the Spurs versus Arsenal game. So, Sir Kiri, you seem like you got your predictions mm -hmm. done. So, I'm, I'm going to turn over to you. <laughs> and you'll give us yep. your, your general overview of the game and pretty much comment on the results. You know the alkaline song, Mr. Uh, Mr. Raffo. The told you I was right. <laughs> More than singing right now, but you know, we know I'll lose the subscribers what we have so far. So we have a lot of the singing thing. But game went exactly as I thought it would. Arsenal dominated procedures. I spread the, that first half, in my opinion, was probably one of the most one-sided halves of a derby match I've ever seen. Mm. Arsenal ran Spurs straight to the ground, straight to the ground. Honestly, I expected a tuning, but I never expected it in this fashion, especially the first half. The first half was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Indeed, indeed. But the guard was something else. Well, we, we've seen this type of performance from Spurs before. You know, they, they tend to go ahead in, in games. So to be honest with you, Arsenal scoring first didn't really come as a surprise to me. It was just a matter of how Spurs would have responded after going behind. Well, that is the thing now. And I think that is where Spurs got it wrong. Because if you see your Arsenal is playing, you can't let Arsenal score a goal. And I think you're going to get something out of that game. Mm. So the whole mentality that Spurs have, especially being a quote-unquote, as they're being called this season, a second-half team, right, is right. not going to cut it against not going to cut it against Arsenal. Because Arsenal going to put the, from them score a goal, the game is put to bed, basically. League and leaders. I have seen that. League <laughs> leaders, for a reason. Pante <laughs> got it absolutely wrong in my mm. um, assumption. Totally wrong. He, the tactics was off, especially in the first half. He brought in Sessin Young, who... I mean, you don't bring in Sessin Young for Aston to that match. But yet you bring him, bring him in for the North London Derby, which was kind of mm. Per Perisic may have me. been a better choice then. Definitely, definitely. And how the first half went, and there was no substitution at halftime. Conte's first substitution came in the 70th minute. Never understand that as well. Not that I'm complaining, because, I mean, <laughs> we saw that it helped my team. So... But that was something very puzzling to me. But Arteta was absolutely spot on. If you notice how Arsenal was playing, most of the attack came from the right hand side through Ben that, White that, and Saka. Mm, that's the side Saka was playing on. Right. Most of the attack came from that side. So, so I think that was a special instruction to the team that is flowing from that side. That is where Spurs is weak. And both of the goals came from that side. So, honestly, I think Arteta got it absolutely spot on. Spurs could not cope. I mean, it's 2023 now. I never even know that slavery still existed, Rafa. But <laughs> that time part that they had some in chains. They had some in chains, I'm telling you. But uh, on, on the <laughs> overview of it, though, uh, wouldn't you say that Arsenal was somewhat lucky in terms of uh, some really good saves from Ramsdale? I can remember... Kane playing in Cessin Young, and he had to save with his legs. You then had another save from Son, I believe. And also Kane had a few opportunities where Ramsdale had to really work to earn his con. Well, that is true, and that is the thing. I don't believe in luck. I believe in, you know, things just happening as a result of talent. Ramsdale is one of the best keepers in the league right now. And if you look at it, and Ketia got a few chances. And I believe if we had a better striker right now, by the end of that first half, it could have easily been 4 0. Mm. I'll, 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 I'll bring in Otis now and just ask him quickly about uh, team selection. Would you have done anything different from the two teams that went out there? Uh, to be honest, no. 
when I saw the Spurs lineup, I was actually hopeful. I thought we were gonna get a good match. I like the inclusion of the the youngster from Senegal, Papa Star. He's a very talented kid, better than Skip, who I hope wouldn't start dead because Benton Core is unavailable. Kulisevsky, we mentioned Kulisevsky. I mentioned Kulisevsky in the last podcast. And um, I, he, he made an impact on the game, but in the end, it, it wasn't enough. I just think Spurs offered very little in that first half. Mm. But we have resistance. Indeed. And, as Ke- and as Kerry said, the game could have been 4 0 had Nketiah been a bit more clinical. I mean, you know, we sit here last week, Thursday, Friday, giving this game the big build up and <laughs> that that watching the first half, you know. Yeah, you know, what what do we know? <laughs> what what do we know? But yeah. Indeed, this, indeed. This is the game. Odegaard party. Pass. Yes, it seems like Arsenal definitely dominated the midfield, especially in that first half where it seemed to be three in the middle for Arsenal versus the two mm-hmm. for Spurs. So at yeah. all times, they had a, a free man available for, for that option. Yeah. Indeed. That, but, that, but that's the way Conte plays, though. And he lives and dies by that way. So I I, I wasn't surprised the way, the way they set up, to be honest. Yes, yes. All right, Kerry, I'll bring you back in just for you to touch on what, what were some of the key talking points in that game? What were some of the key moments which pretty much led to Arsenal running out victors? Well, in the last podcast, I mentioned two points that I thought would have impacted the game, and those two <laughs> points did. I told you, Laurie's, his confidence is rock bottom right now. He's absolutely out of it mentally, and it shows, and... Saka knew that Saka just put the ball close to Doris and we saw what the result was. Doris is totally out of it. I said they could not manage Saka. I don't know if you remember that car too. Um, the road run. Every time <laughs> they set up a trap, you know, beat, beat him, gone. Okay. So that was basically Saka. Every time Conte threw something at him, beat, beat, Saka is out of there. And mm. That's how the game went. So that came as no surprise to me because as... We know that's what I predicted. Those two guys would have impacted the game. Glories negatively, Saka positively. So things played out as how I thought it would. Absolutely. And of course, Saliba, Gabriel, they did their thing against Kane. Yes, Kane right. one and two chances, which is natural. It's Kane. But Important to keep in another clean sheet I think as they well. Did their thing. I think it's the best, currently on farm, the best centre back period in the Premier League, right? Gabriel Saliba. Mm. Well, I guess Arsenal's position in, in the table is is evidence of that as well. It, it's hard to argue against that in the current form that Arsenal is in, you know. The co- Runaway exactly. league leaders due to this victory over Spurs. But let's jump straight in because another derby took place and Manchester is red. Otis, t- take this one away for us. What is your overall perspective on the game that occurred on Saturday? Uh, four words, Rafa. Four words. Eric Ten Hag, masterclass. <laughs> masterclass. Masterclass by oh, Ten Hag. Yes. yes, yes. I mean, I could go into detail, but I'm not sure if we have time. So I'll just summarize it for the viewers and the listeners. I think United came out with a with a brilliant plan to stifle City's midfield. In the first half, I think United played really in the first half. I, I was observing throughout the game in the first half, especially, where Raju was being shadowed by Ericsson, KDB was being shadowed by Fred, and Kaz- and Bernardo Silva was being shadowed by Raju. And you had Bruno and Martial pressing the centre back. So the out ball for City was the, the wing back, Walker and Cancelo. But and then you had Haaland, he had to start a drop in deep. And whenever he dropped deep, a centre back came with him. So when the full backs got it, they had not much option. And United were willing to let them have it rather than Rodri, who is a key cog into the system. And I think Ken has time work. For the mm. first half, I, I think. Fred and Malassia were outstanding in the first half. And I think Ten Hag got his spot on in the first half, especially. 
So pretty much city dominated possession, but very little in the way of penetration. Yes, and then in the in the second half, City United uh, made a substitution. Anthony came on. Anthony Martial came on, and I think that had a negative impact on United's game plan. Because if you realize, City stepped it up a notch, and United had no response for it, and eventually City got their goal to uh, a well worked goal from KDB Grealish. and Grealish. Yes, mm. but um. I think Rafa, if you, I'm not I'm sure we are watching Mark, but if you remember, I think it was about 78 minutes or something. One Bissaka, he he went on a run. I think he he dribbled to three or four City players. And I think yes, that yes. was that was the turning point for United mm. here. Because to be honest, even I'm sitting there, I'm saying the way how City was playing at that time I was like the best you could get is a one-one. But that run by one Bissaka, I think, was the turning point. I think from that point on, confidence United, grew. They, they grew in the game. Granato came on. And and they believe, and um, we, but from from the start of the game though, we could see the pattern that it was gonna be City in position and Manu playing on the counter, and yes, even yes. in the first half with City really dominating position, Manu looked the most dangerous of the two teams. Definitely. So City dominated without penetrating, but once Manu got the ball, it was purposeful counter attacking play, and which even led to a, a few chances or half chances. Yes, a bit more indeed. clinical fish, finishing from Rashford, he could have gotten a goal in the first half when he drew uh the 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 goal the city goalkeeper out yes. outside of the 18 yes. yard. Yes. You know? Okay. It was uh yeah, it was again like we I think we 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 pointed this out last week in the podcast that City would dominate possession and United would pretty much defend and spring the quick counter attacks and for the first 70 minutes or so, that's exactly that's how the, the pattern game went. that the game went, yeah. indeed. Yeah, talk to and us the, though about the, the, the tactical approach and the team selection from both managers. Were there any surprises? Would you have <laughs> done anything differently? Ah, uh, Lucia center back. Not many thought he would continue with that pattern. He, he's been doing it to good, to good effect of late. And he took so Ten Hag's credit again. He stuck by Luke Shaw. And I was worried for him with Haaland up there. But again, like you said, City didn't penetrate. City didn't pin them back no. to, to, to show up any stars in their system. Yeah, and for for City, again, last week we spoke, would, would Cancelo start? Cancelo did start. Um, played okay, but um, I don't think he had the desired effect that Pep would have wanted. Outside of that, though, I think like I think it's more credit to United tactics than Pep getting it wrong. Mm. They dominated position, but they just couldn't penetrate, and um, they didn't create enough for Haaland, which is not something you say very often. Definitely. But um, I think I think Eric Ten Hag, his tactics, he, Fred came into the midfield, you know, and um, he he we thought he would start Anthony on the wing, but he put. Bruno Fernandez on the way, and he bulk up the midfield against City's midfield. Fred Casemiro and Eriksen, and I think it worked well in the end. I mean, yeah. Yes, uh, the re- well, the result is there to show, but we 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 can't go any further without, <laughs> you know, the the officials, in my opinion, played a key role in deciding this game. Yeah, Kiri, I'll bring you in at this point. What were your thoughts on that 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 Rashford? Offside, no call, which led to the the, the Bruno goal. Was well, it offside? Wasn't it offside? Issue. Um, I, for me personally, I think I would have called it offside. But as an Arsenal fan, seeing where City <laughs> position was, we kind of glad it was the goal was given. But um, in all seriousness. I would say it's offside, and I think that is the problem that we're having with VAR, especially in the e It is very inconsistent with the calls. I think, but the rule says, though, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that it's up to the discretion of the referee to make that call. So if the referee doesn't think that Rashford impeded the play or impeded anyone, then the goal should stand. And I guess that's the way the referee... Interpreted that, it. Right. Indeed. There was no 
she didn't impede anyone. So, you know, go given. But the day that game also played was similar as a, I predicted 3 2, but it ended 2 1 when you win. Um, I mentioned two players on the last podcast, um, Grealish and Rashford. And of course, both of them scored. But Ten Hag <laughs> definitely got it spot on. Um, there's a question, though, that many persons are now posing. Um, does Haaland actually take something away from Manchester City? Mm. Is Man City as fluid as they once were? That's indeed an interesting question. You know, I was just in a discussion over the weekend as well, where he gives and he takes would be my answer to that question. So while he contributes goals, which is what a striker should do, or at least for me, that should be their primary purpose, the intensity of the Man City press may not necessarily be there with him up front. So it's either or. Either you take the goals and there's less defensive pressure or you go with a fast nine where there's greater defensive pressure but maybe less goals. So it's really up to the manager. But for me, one, Haaland is an excellent striker and I would not have it any other way. I am taking Haaland every day of the week. Every day of the week. Every day of the week. <laughs> Pretty much. But let, let, let's delve deeper into it. Benji, I'll bring you in here. I, I'd mm-hmm. love to hear your views on those key moments which pretty much resulted in a United victory. The referee's decision in particular, right? Well, the referee's decision and pretty much uh, walk us through even the, the, the second goal, the winning goal by Rashford as well. Uh, yeah, my take on the referee's decision if if that decision had gone City's way, I'd be I'd be upset. I mean, it's a subjective call. It's a gray area, so to speak. It's the law. You know, if Rashford wasn't there, would Akanji have reacted differently? Would Edison have reacted differently? Most likely. Does that mean he impeded? Impeded play. I guess there's a solid argument for that, but um, what can we do about it now? I think in the game. Um, the second goal. That's when United. That's when we met. United got that goal, and all the momentum was with them. You could feel the crowd was behind them, and City City was was feeling the pressure too. And I think it came from a City turnover, where Bruno played the, a reverse pass to Garnacho, who came on and had a real impact on the game. His his, his first cross was a. Uh, was blocked by the defender. And um then he got another opportunity where he he weaved his way past I think the defender was Ake and played it across the goal. And um Marcus Rashford like like he's been there all for the past six weeks or so after the World Cup, however long it was, on there, on the spot again to finish to good effect. And from there on, I think United City, City never really checked me. There was a, a, a little bit of a, you know, heart in mouth moment where Haaland was in the box. He had an opportunity and Casemiro put in a brilliant tackle and um to 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 thwart him. And I think aside from that, United saw the game and it was a good win for Eric Ten Hag. Yeah. A good win for Eric Ten Hag indeed. So do you do you think this pretty much is gonna lead to pretty much City losing the title? Or do you think they are still in with a fighting chance? Ah you, you know, they say nobody wins the title in January. So mm. you can lose the title in January. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think City lost it. City, 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 we've seen before. History has showed us that City can go on run, long winning runs. And I think, what is it, eight points adrift now? Eight points adrift. It's no easy task, but if there's one team in the league who could do it, it's Manchester City. So I don't think they're out of it yet. Yet. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. 
Interesting thoughts there. Interesting thoughts there. It's been a wonderful weekend of fixtures, you know, two derby matches, uh, title winning consequences. Indeed. And, you know, there are some games coming up in the midweek as well. So the games are coming thick and fast with each having its own consequence, whether it's on the top four or on the title or even on the relegation battle. Relegation. And looking ahead, we see Manchester United facing off with Crystal Palace on Wednesday. And we see Man City facing off with Spurs on Thursday. So before we end this podcast, I'd just like, for you to give us your views on those two upcoming fixtures. I'll start with you, Kerry. What do you say about the United Crystal Palace game? Well, honestly, I think the Crystal Palace United game, I'm looking for a draw. Um, I have to give Vera his praises so far. He's doing really well at Crystal Palace. So I think I think and they're playing a home. They're not bad at home. I think they will pull it off defensively to slow the money. So I'm going without. I, I think it will be a draw. That that's a that's a surprising uh score there with Manu coming off this momentous win over City, a draw against lowly Crystal Palace. But, but we'll we'll see how it plays out. What what say you, Benji? Who are we to question, Kiri? He got both <laughs> both matches last week spot on. So, I indeed, mean, indeed. Yeah, but um, yeah, United on a great run. Palace a bit of a patchy form of late, but I think they'll be all right for the season. Vera doing a wonderful job. They lost on the weekend to City, but not that they played to to Chelsea. Mind sorry, right? One not, nil but, to Chelsea. Yeah, but not that they played bad. But um, they played really well, but but eventually they lost. I think, but I think United will go to Crystal Palace with a lot of confidence and a a, a coach who who will be the first to remind them that they've won nothing yet and the long old season. I think United will come out one nil victors. Uh, indeed, I I I can't see anything other than a United win. I mean, on the back of this victory over Man City. I'm looking at United going three nil winners. Wow, three nil winners. I don't see Crystal Palace scoring, and I see United defense keeping a clean sheet. So, anything other than a United win would be a big shock to me personally. But let's pivot a bit and turn our attention to another big one. Thursday, Manchester City. Off a defeat to Manchester United faces Spurs off a defeat from Arsenal. Kiri, talk to us about this one. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's going to be a very, very interesting matchup. But I think Spurs, the timing of this match couldn't be any worse for Spurs, to be honest. Mm. Because I think revenge is in Pep's mind right about now. And I think Spurs is going to get the beating. I think City will run away with this match by the by the end of the first half. We City should have three points by the end of the first half, to be mm. honest. I think and they're playing at Etihad by the way. That's right. And that is where Pep's strength is. That is where City's strength lies, to be honest. And coming off the defeat, seeing Arsenal kind of slipping away. I think Pep will get everything spot on from the team selection to the tactics. I think Spurs will be running to the ground by halftime, to be honest. Those who Spurs winning that match are coming out with a point, to be honest. Okay. So Man City to win then. Okay. Right. What what say you, Otis, on that one? Man City versus Spurs. Yeah, I... Conte and Spurs, they look... They look disjointed. I don't think Conte believes. I don't think the players believe. I I can't see anything other than a City win. City they, they, I think Haaland has gone three games without scoring. He bounced back this game. City have now lost two straight. Two in a row. Pep, 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 Pep won those three straight. They'll come out gunning. And um, I think this, this this could get ugly. I think. Mm. I, I, I see City four, first one. City four, Spurs one. 
Well, I must say, I can't see anything other than a city win myself. You know, if I was a betting man, <laughs> I would definitely bet for City to score first. <laughs> with the history of Spurs conceding. <laughs> and with City coming off two losses, you know, and still in the title race, anything other than a victory, pretty much, you could possibly just hope. hand the title over to Arsenal. So, Pep has to go all out for this win. So, sure. I am expecting Arakos Etihad and City coming out victors. Uh, I do think Spurs will score, however. So, I'm going to go with a close 2-1 win for City. A close 2-1 win for City. But that brings us to the end of this podcast. I'd just like to thank Otis and Kiri for sharing in their views. Uh, some very interesting and informative information there. Thanks to our viewers and subscribers. Just like to encourage you to continue to share, like, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Rafa signing off. Peace.